I'm Lacey Shane, and uh, I'm a nonprofit management professional. I'm mostly consulting these days, and I live in Norco, California. Cool. Nice to have you here, Lacey. Sophia. Hi, I'm Sophia, um, known as the go-to executive wisdom mentor with Wisdom Speaks Life, and I live in Chicago, Illinois. Chicago's in the house. All right, Grace Ann, where are you coming from today? Good morning from Naperville, Illinois. Um, I am a stager, redesigner, and color consultant, helping people get the home they want with the house they have using their existing furniture. And when they're getting ready to sell, I help them stage it so that they get more money, but more importantly, sell faster. So important. Yeah. Marina, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, coming from New York City. Uh, my name is Marina. I'm a stretch therapist and Reiki master. Happy awesome. Thanks for being with us. And so, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. I just went live on Facebook. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started so that uh, Tracy uh, has her full time to be able to talk with all of you. And today we're really talking about creating a personal image that will maximize your business success. And for those of you that don't know Tracy Pullman, this Tracy Pullman right here in the red and the white, uh, she looks so stylish today. I should have asked my stylist what to wear today for like the style conversation. I didn't even ask her, you know, so she's probably going to be so disappointed. Like what's happening over there, <laughs> but I do have my cool earrings on. So at least I tried to fit some style in today. So anyhow, um, so I'm really excited about today's conversation. And for those of you that are joining us for the first time, we have this platform for our members to come and teach. Each one of them are in a different industry, have a different product, have a different service that they offer. This is an opportunity for them to come to you for a full hour to be able to teach you something to walk away with um, and for them to really motivate and inspire you in all the different areas that they focus on. So if you're not a member of Lead Up For Women, I'll drop the information below uh, because as a member, this is one of the platforms of the many. We have the magazine, the podcast, the 10 tips, the Member Monday spotlights, the Thrive Thursday spotlights, you name it, we keep you in the spotlight all the time here at Lead Up For Women so that you can shine and you can expand your influence to attract the right customers. Because you know every time we do one of these Teaching Tuesdays, the right people that want to register to hear what the person has to say show up. So you're attracting the right people. So Tracy, without any longer ado, why don't you go ahead and get started? Okay, thank you so much and welcome everyone. So glad everyone is here. Um, I will be asking questions and love feedback. I don't like to sit and talk and have everyone look at me and stare at me. So please, um, share. You can share in the chat, different things like that. I'm going to ask you some questions, but I thought I would first start out a little bit about who I am. And for those of you that are thinking, oh my goodness, she probably was born the way she is. And I was not. You see, when I first started my professional journey, I was a quality supervisor for a manufacturing company and I wore a uniform hairnet hard hats, steel toed shoes. I knew nothing about style. And I remember getting a promotion at work as a manager. And I was like, oh my goodness, how do I dress? I had absolutely no clue until I figured out the secret killer recipe for a fabulous look. And so now over the past 21 years, I've been helping professional women figure out how to create a personal image that impacts the profession. And I've discovered a proven system that's going to simplify getting ready for each occasion. So you guys ready? Yes. To talk? Okay, good. Put your information in the chat. Everyone put your information in the chat. I want to know who you are and what you do. So if you could put that information in there, uh, please go ahead and do that as we get going. Hopefully now we've got everyone on. And so have you ever found yourself getting dressed for that presentation or an important meeting and you can't figure out what to wear? So you end up with an okay outfit and a pile of clothes on the floor. Anyone? <laughs> Anyone go do that? Okay. Well, finding an outfit to wear that makes you shine as a successful uh, professional woman 
can sometimes feel like a 10 mile uphill climb, right? But it doesn't have to be. Creating a great look that you love can really be simple, believe it or not. But with this past year of us working from home in the virtual world, it's become somewhat of a challenge. Anyone kind of feel that way, that it has been a challenge? Um, because when casual dress is the norm, how do we dress? We're all on Zoom. We all look like the same little square, right? And many feel like that pre-COVID dress that seems so formal for a Zoom meeting is like kind of inappropriate or that was so formal, the pre-COVID dress, it's kind of inappropriate for a Zoom meeting, right? And we're uncertain to where to look casual yet professional. And many of us, I'm included, have maybe gained a few pounds since COVID and maybe those clothes aren't quite fitting the way they should. I know I hear this from all the people all the time. Can anyone relate to the struggle? If you can relate to the struggle, go ahead and put yes in the comments or you can speak up and say, yes, that's me. Anyone struggling with it? Okay, Marina says yes, yes, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Anyone say something? Okay. I, I think said, I said, yes, that's me. I'm in my car, so I can't chat. Oh, okay. Yes. Hi. Yes. I can, yes. I can say yes, for sure. Yes. Okay. I think we've all, it's been kind of like that. And I think if you're like most women, we all want to create a personal image that's professional yet appropriate for our profession. And also with the times, we want it to look good on us and make us feel confident, don't we? And we want, the, want one that fits our current body shape, not the one that we used to have sometimes many years ago. And also one that makes us different than the rest of our competition. Would you say that's kind of what you're looking for? I think probably most people can say that. Yes, that's what you're looking for. I know a lot of people have said in progress. Anyone, anyone making a comment? But I also hear many people say, I really don't care how I look. But believe it or not, your personal image is part of your brand. Okay, so your personal image is part of your brand message. When you put those clothes on in mor each morning, do you consider how people will perceive you? Does the way you look send the right message about you and your business? Okay. Today, we're going to talk about your personal image and its impact on your business success. Your personal impact or personal image has an impact on the impression you leave with those you meet. It has an impact on your self-confidence, which I think this is probably the biggest one that we really need to be worried about. Your competitive edge over your competition and your productivity. If you want to put your best foot forward when it comes to your appearance so you can be confident that you look your best, have people think positively about you before you even utter a word, be the most productive with your time and want to stand out from other professionals, then you're in the right place. And I have some secrets to share with you, okay? So what we're about to discover is that caring about your personal image has nothing to do about vanity, okay? It's not about looking all pretty and looking all good for you, but it's about posi positioning yourself as a successful, confident, professional woman. And here's some of the things you need to consider. The first thing you need to consider is that your image determines people's impression of you and your business. So I'm going to repeat that again. Your image determines people's impression of you and your business. Now, there's been countless research that's been done showing that within eight seconds, people are forming an opinion of you. They're deciding, do they like you? Do they want to do business with you? Unfortunately, within eight seconds, they're not determining what your expertise is or what's on the inside. They're looking at your appearance as well as your body language. And the problem is, is many times we don't get a second chance to make a positive impression if you blow that first one. You can probably tell me, and people tell me all the time, every time I talk to people, almost every day someone has a story about someone that they met who's personal image was less than, therefore they thought poorly about their ability to do the job, okay? Also, you probably heard the saying, like attracts like. 
meaning that people who are similar to us are ones that are attracted to us. And unfortunately, the way you dress can attract or repel your ideal customers and clients. When you create that personal image that works for you and your profession, it becomes easier to get dressed each morning. It shows off who you are and who your personality is, and it creates positive opinions towards you. And it can instantly produce a boost in your business brand, which in turn is going to attract your ideal customers and also more income possibilities. This is exactly what happened with Teresa. Um, she actually designs outdoor spaces for people, and she was struggling trying to figure out the right, the right way to dress for her body shape because she had just had her second child and her body really didn't go back the way she had hoped it was. Plus, she was confused with how to create a professional look. She wanted to look professional while meeting her clients, yet she was running around in many times muddy, messy environments, not appropriate for professional wear. She's like, there's no way I could wear professional wear. So after working together, she was able to figure out how to dress her new mom shape and create that professional looking yet casual attire while using most of her existing clothes. Now she feels very professional, yet she also feels appropriate in the way she dresses. And it's, it's given her this confidence in how she's sending the right brand message for her business. She's able to attract those high-end customers that she was looking for because of the way she was dressing versus she was showing up in jeans and a t-shirt, okay? And now she's showing up much differently for all of those appointments and networking opportunities that she has. So I'm going to now come to a reflection question. So this is where if you've got a piece of paper and you want to jot down some notes, feel free to, because I want you to go back to it and look to see. So how can you create the best first impression for your brand with your clothes? Okay, so think about how you're showing up now or maybe even how you show up the next time you're giving a presentation, you're meeting with a client, you're networking. I really want you to look in the mirror and see what are your th first thoughts if you were to see yourself? Would your ideal customer be attracted to you? And is there any type of changes you feel like you need to make to best represent your brand? Okay, and if anyone wants to share any comments that they have, please feel free to, if anyone wants to. If anyone's brave enough, right, to share anything? I'll share something. So okay. um, in working with stylists that I've worked with in the past, one of the things that they mention is they, um, the first thing they ask is how do you wanna feel? Right. So do you want to feel confident or elegant or powerful or, um, you know, how do you want to feel? And then you dress in the clothing that makes you feel that way, because the, you know, the best thing we can wear is confidence. So wearing clothes we're not fidgeting with all the time was kind of how I was taught, you know, and then also colors that complement your skin tone and your eyes. Um, so that's kind of the things that I look for. And then also consistency, you know, if um, for me, I love to wear weird and crazy earrings and different things that pop a little bit in style. So then I always buy those types of things in they are in my wardrobe. Yeah. And actually, that's going to be a good one that we're going to talk about in a few points here, because it's a symbol. It's your symbol that you use is the earrings. And that was one of the things that I noticed about you is <laughs> your earrings. Okay. It's a symbol that you use and that's great. Anyone else want to share anything before we go on to the second point? I'll share just a little bit. Okay. Um, so I I've noticed that I've started showing up more in my lab coat mm -hmm. and some people don't realize it's a lab coat, so they think it looks just like a white blazer, which then turns them off. If it's a smaller audience, then you can actually see my 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 name tag because it's it's it falls right under my Zoom name tag, so you can't always tell that it's a lab coat. So I'm I'm a little bit mixed feelings on that, but I I I've gotten some good and some bad reviews on the lab coat. Okay, okay. And, and it's important to, but that, but that's who you are because 
Melissa, you help people with their health. You're an expert in that. You're um, in the medical field, right? And so that automatically associates you in that as that expert, which I think is really great. So I think you're really dressed. It's just maybe you need to like think about who you're speaking to and how you show up. But I don't think it's bad to show up even if it looked like you had a white jacket on, okay? It doesn't because you're an expert. OK, and you would expect an expert to dress a certain way. Um, number two, when talking about the impact is when you dress for your body shape, you feel great about your personal image and thus it boosts your self-confidence. OK, so when you dress for your body shape, you feel great about your personal image and it boosts your self-confidence. OK, so I want you to think back to a time when you know you looked your best. OK. How did you feel? How did it make you feel? Okay, you can drop it in the chat or if you want to speak up and talk about it. Um, it could have been at a wedding. It could have been, it could have been your wedding. It could have been a kid's wedding. It made you feel powerful, right? It could have been when you were in your 20s, right? For some of us, that's when we felt like we looked our best, right? Confident, pretty, amazing, right? It's like you hold your head up high. It's like you felt like you could conquer the world, right? Thank you everybody for uh, commenting on those things, right? It's like it made you feel great. The, but the problem is, is when we don't feel great about our look, we constantly notice all the flaws. So have you ever looked in the mirror and all you notice is, oh my gosh, my belly's sticking out. I got a double chin. This is a problem with my family. Like a, I'm like, all I can see is all the things, my butt's too big. and and all of the flaws. And when that happens, many times we stay in the background. We don't wanna get noticed. We just throw on clothes just to get dressed and it negatively impacts our business because it gives us lack of motivation, unmet goals, negative mindset and non-success when that happens. So have you ever saw an outfit like maybe on a mannequin or you saw on a person and you loved it. And so you bought it and then you put it on and then you're like, I don't know, this just doesn't look right. Well, one thing that could happen, as Colleen had mentioned, is sometimes if you're not wearing the right colors, it doesn't bring out the natural highlights in your skin tone and it doesn't make you look as good. But also it probably, and this is what I find with a lot of times, it's actually not the right thing for your body shape. No matter your size, shape, or age, you can look good, okay? So I know people tell me all the time, but you, Tracy, you don't know about this shape. There is no way, and you can. It does not matter. You can still dress whatever shape you are, and you look can look fantastic with it. Your body shape, unfortunately, determines what type of neckline you should be wearing. So should you be wearing a V neckline or a boat neckline? Whether you should wear high-waisted or low-waisted pants. Um, what type of shoe you should be wearing, what length of jacket should you be wearing or sweater, what style of dress should you wear, whether you should wear a belt, what type of earrings you should wear, and even what type of purse you should carry. I mean, that's a lot, isn't it, based on your body shape. But unfortunately, those things can either make or break your look. Dressing for your body shape will make you look in the mirror and say, oh, well, and instead of saying, oh, no, which... I'd, I hope you guys aren't saying, oh no, but it happens sometimes. What you wear can make you look like you've lost weight or gained weight. You're taller, you're shorter, you're bigger, uh, you're smaller, you know, it on your hips, your butt, your bust. Believe it or not, there's tactics that you can use to dress appropriately for these. But all in all, what we always want to do is dress so we can de-emphasize the negative features and highlight the positive features. This is gonna make you feel assured in your look, which can in turn boost your confidence. And confidence is important because we know when it's boosted, you send out this aura, right? That makes you attractive to your potential customers and clients. People would rather do business with someone who's confident than someone who is unsure. It's amazing what confidence can do to the success of your business. And I want to tell you a story a little bit about Mary. Mary was an interior designer who over the years had experienced many trials in her life. 
And during those trials, she'd experienced a lot of stress. Okay. And we know what happens. Uh, Dr. Melissa can tell us that when you have stress, you put on weight, right? And she had lost that figure that she once had, and she wasn't feeling confident nor comfortable in those tight clothes that she was wearing. Can anyone relate <laughs> like when that happens? I know for me, that's happened to me over the years and I've had to adjust. She felt like her outward appearance was in conflict with her profession of creating beautiful indoor spaces. So while we were working together, Mary learned what to wear and what not to wear to complement her changed figure. Immediately, she started getting compliments about how great she looked and people kept telling her she looked younger and more energetic which she loved that. And they've even asked her if she had lost weight, which she had not. She, she was tickled that basically it came down to the fabric, the type of fabric she was wearing, as well as the shape of the clothes. And it made the biggest impact. And she couldn't believe that it was literally just that. She's now more confident with her shape um, because the clothes fit her perfectly. And the best thing is she's landing more projects. She feels like she's the part of a designer, which is great. So I've got another reflection question for you. And this, I'm gonna have you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. Where would you rate your knowledge of, say your specific tops, pants, jackets or sweaters, dresses, shoes, belts, jewelry, purses? Which one of these things do you know exactly what's gonna look good on your body shape? Okay, and I want you to type in a 10 if you're totally confident and one being you have no clue what to wear. Okay, so give yourself a rating from one to 10 on all of those clothing items. What's going to look best on your body shape? Okay. Okay, good. Thanks, everyone, for commenting. Appreciate it. So I'm going to actually have a video for you where I'm going to share with you some quick tips on how to look 10 to 20 pounds thinner. How good would it feel to you if people were asking you if you had lost weight? <laughs> what a confidence booster, right? Because I don't care how, whatever size women are, they always want to, they don't want those flaws. And many times we associate those flaws like the big belly as I need to lose weight. And so I'm gonna be sharing with you in just a minute. Number three of the item that has an impact on your personal image, it's your positive personal image can boost your productivity, okay? So having a pro positive, say that 20 times, a positive personal image, it can boost your productivity. Because here's the thing, when you look good, you feel good, which makes you do good, okay? I'm gonna say that again, because I think somebody needs to hear it. When you look good, you feel good, and it makes you do good. So I want you to imagine you have a day off, okay? You're all excited. You're like, I am going to stay in my pajamas. No fussing with the hair, no makeup. You're just going to relax. How productive are you on those days? You probably are spending more time catching up on the latest Netflix binge show that you're watching instead of doing all those household projects that you were thinking about doing. I don't know about you, but my dress really affects my mood and my mindset. I remember when COVID hit, I was all excited because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I don't have to get dressed up. I'm not going anywhere. And it was very quickly, you know, probably about two or three weeks later, I started feeling depressed. I started feeling non-successful. I started feeling non-focused. And it really had an impact on my mood. And I hear so many people say, but I work from home and I just wear my pajamas. And I know sometimes I see women that look like they're showing up for Zooms in their pajamas as well, okay? But clothing has symbolic meaning and it helps us with focus, okay? That's why in theater, they always have a dress rehearsal, right? It always brings the actor's performance up a notch when they dress as their character. Okay, when you don't dress in the right image, you are not getting into character of a successful businesswoman. So here's the thing, how we dress really makes an impact on being productive. 
And I'm going to give you a couple of things that are going to probably help you with that. First one is you, and you've heard this before, dress for success, right? For each one of you, this may take on a different form depending on your present or your profession. How would you like to show up for an important meeting? How do you feel like you need to be showing up? So what is dress for success for you? And that's really going to depend on what you do for a living. And I'm sure you heard your mom say that when you were given a presentation at school or something, right? Dress for success. You need to get dressed up. I know I told that for my kids. And my son was like, there's no way. I, I can just wear my jeans. And I'm like, you're wearing pants. And he said it did help him. So there it goes. I was right as a mama. Also, you've probably heard the phrase dress for your next level. Dress according to the next level of success that you desire to achieve. It's going to put you into character and it's going to have a psychological impact on your performance. It will give you that competitive edge if you show up more professional than your competitors and will help you get noticed more. So if most of your competitors are dressing one way and you dress another way, now I'm not talking about you need to dress 10 steps up, just dress up just a little bit, okay? And see what an impact that has on how people perceive you and your business. Now, a study was done at, um, by some researchers at Northwestern University to illustrate that productivity is enhanced by dressing well. Half of the participants were dressed in lab coats and the other were in street clothes. Believe it or not, the ones who wore the lab coats made fewer mistakes than the ones in the regular street clothes. Then another study was done with these same lab coats. Half of them wore what they were told painter's coats and the other half were wearing doctor's coats, okay? So what happened is the people that were wearing doctor's coats actually made fewer mistakes than the ones that wore the painter's coats and they were the same coats. So it just goes to show you um, and from these tests, researchers had gathered that dressing a certain way can help you feel smarter more capable and more productive, okay? So now we're getting back down to our next reflection question. What is your symbol for success for your personal image? Could it be maybe a jacket or maybe a cardigan? Maybe a dynamic necklace or earrings like Colleen had mentioned, right? That she loves some fun earrings that puts her into that successful professional look that she's trying to achieve. Maybe it's heels and I'm not talking about high heels. They could be low heels, right? You know, there's something about the click, click, click when you're walking around that makes you feel, you know, beautiful. It makes you feel successful. It makes you feel, I don't know, there's something about it. I know for me, sometimes I'll just put my heels on if I'm having a bad day and they're not huge. Also, it could be a certain color. I love to wear red. Okay. Red is powerful. When I speak or when I do anything, I always wear my red. So what could that symbol be for you? Um, some bold glasses, someone said, right. Okay. She has colored glasses. Yeah. Uh, the sound of heels. Lori says, I know there's something about it, right? Um, guess what my color is. Mary, I don't know. You'll have to tell us. I'm not sure if I know you, Mary, <laughs> well enough to know. So Colleen says pink, right? So um, now your challenge is, because maybe you're just discovering what this is or you're thinking about it, but your challenge is tomorrow, I want you to wear that symbol, okay? And I'm gonna put a little posting in our Lead Up For Women community Facebook group. And I want you to, if, you, if you're daring enough, post a selfie. I want you to post that you did it. And I want to know how did it make you feel? Were you more productive? Because it does show, studies have shown, like I mentioned, what you wear does it make an impact on your productivity, okay? So can't wear mine until the glasses come in. Okay, definitely. Well, maybe think of something else. Maybe add your heels, Lori. I think you said that, that uh, your heels were one of the uh, symbols too for you. So we've covered a lot so far, and I bet you didn't realize your personal appearance had that much of an impact. We talked about how your image determines people's impression of you. We talked about within those eight seconds, they're deciding whether they want to do business with you 
Um, so you need to evaluate whether your image is sending that right message. And is it in alignment with your brand? And are you, um, you know, attracting those ideal customers by the way that you're uh, dressing? Also, we talked about feeling great about your look and how it can boost your self-confidence, especially when you're wearing clothes that are most flattering to your body shape. I see many women, they think they don't like what they see. So what they do is they go out and they're, they're like, I'm going to buy a whole new wardrobe. But here's the thing, if you don't buy the right clothes for your look and for your shape, then that really isn't going to make you happy. Instead, you're going to have a closet full of clothes and you're going to feel like you have nothing to wear. It's all about de-emphasizing those negative features and emphasizing or promoting your strongest attributes so you can show up as your best self and you can be that powerful, successful businesswoman, okay? We also talked about how your productivity can be boosted with a positive personal look. What you wear has a symbolic and psychological impact on how you perform in your profession. So many people need to have a symbol to get them into character. And I'm sure some of you thinking are thinking, but you know, like, really, why does it really matter? Like, people should just like me the way I am. And I agree, they should. They should get to know you. They shouldn't judge you based on what you look like. But unfortunately, they do. And unfortunately, if you don't care about your appearance, you can lose some potential uh, clients and customers because sometimes people can't overlook the thoughts um, of your image and its impact on your brand. Also, you're going to have to focus your efforts on building self-confidence in other ways besides just the simple way of dressing a certain way, okay, that's going to complement your body shape. So you can feel great about yourself and it's going to have a trickle down effect in everything that you do. Also, you're going to have to strive harder to be more productive because you're going to be battling those unconscious uh, impact that your clothes have on how you perform. However, if you work on creating a personal image that you love and it's right for you and your body shape and it's consistent with your branding, you're going to leave a great impression wherever you go. You're going to have more self-confidence, which will help you get noticed more and will result in more business opportunities, maybe clients, speaking opportunities, partnership opportunities, those types of things. And then it's going to help you perform like the successful entrepreneur or professional that you are or that you want to be. Well, I can imagine that many of you might want to get a jump start on it today in achieving a look that you love that's appropriate for your body shape. So if you didn't rate yourself a 10 when I asked how confident you were in dressing for your body shape, I have a special gift for you, okay? How would you like to appear 10 to 20 pounds thinner without diet or exercise? Anyone? 10 to 20 pounds thinner without diet or exercise? Okay. Okay. <laughs> What would make you feel more confident about your look than people saying, did you lose weight? So if you want, just con comment slimmer in the chat or in the comments, if you're watching this on the replay, if you would like some information. And I'm going to send you a video. And that video is going to explain the colors of the clothes you should be wearing. It's going to talk about what item of clothing is a must have that you must wear. It's going to talk about what neckline is going to make you look slimmer, what sleeve length, believe it or not, you should be wearing, also what accessories could add to your outfit, and it's going to share some more information, okay? So you can use, the greatest thing is you can use what you have in your closet. I can get, bet you, you're going to have some of these items already in your closet, and you're going to be able to dress tomorrow slimmer. Imagine that feeling when you know you look fantastic, you're getting compliments, what could that do for your self-confidence? So again, if you didn't comment slimmer, comment slimmer, and I'll make sure that I get you the information, or you can click on the link that I'm going to share with you in just a few minutes. Now, I also realize that some of you might be saying, okay, I want more than just that video, Tracy. If you're unsure if you're leaving the best impression as it relates to your image and your business brand, if you don't feel confident in those tops, the pants, the jackets, the sweaters, the dresses, the accessories, the belts, the shoes, um, the purses, and you don't feel confident about that as it relates to your body shape, or you want to create a look that's going to help you become more productive, I have something extra special for you, if that's the case. Um, it's a complimentary, simple style session where we will come up with a plan to create your own personal image that's going to maximize your business success. It's absolutely free. 
and we'll come up some ideas so you can rock your look and feel great about it. I know many of you would be interested in something more because I've introduced some possibilities and strategies that could change your personal image into one that you love, complements your body shape, boost your self-confidence, and is beneficial for your business. The greatest news is it's not complicated, okay? Believe it or not, there is a system for all of this, but it will have a big impact in helping you create that self-image that you're looking for. And it's going to trickle down in all areas of your life and not just in your business. The transformation will give you tons of compliments and who doesn't love a compliment? Wouldn't that feel great? Because let's face it, we don't get a lot of compliments from our family all the time. I don't know about you, but I don't with uh, two uh, young adult kids and my husband, my husband does more than anybody. But if this sounds like something that would be interested, uh, that you would be interested in, I've opened up some spots in my calendar this week and next week for you. So I would love to offer you a complimentary simple style session. It's what we're going to do is we're going to get on Zoom and we're going to talk about your business goals and how your image can impact those goals. We're going to also talk about how you feel about your current image and the struggles that you face when you get dressed each and every day. I'm going to share with you also ways that you can create a simple look that's going to work for you in the best way possible. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, then comment image in the chat or in the comments, and I will get the information to you. I want to help each of you create that personal image that's going to maximize your business success. So if you're interested, just comment image. It's free. And plus, we're going to get to know each other a little bit better as well. And I'll send you the information on that simple style session. Or you can click on the link if you, you know, would, if that would be easier for you. So thanks so much, everyone, for being attentive. I hope I've given you some tips in creating a personal image that aligns with and enhances your brand. And I'm going to leave you with this quote, quote um, by Joyce Brothers. A strong, positive self-image is the best preparation for success. So does anyone have any questions for me? You guys can just unmute yourself if you want to ask uh, Tracy a question. I do. Okay. Hey, Lori. <laughs> Hi. And we still have to get on a call, so I put in there. <laughs> yes, good, so good. I, um, you know, I spend most of my time on Zoom calls. Um, I have very few client calls. And several months ago, I started this shirt thing with the biz bolster and my t-shirts that have the biz bolster but yeah. I honestly don't know how that comes across so I just so we've got a whole bunch of people on here I would just love to have an opinion of does this present in a professional way that people would want to do business with me okay one question I'm going to ask you first before anyone answers that okay how do you feel when you wear it I feel good. I, I like, I mean, I like the colors. I always have like bright pink. I don't really like my white as much, but, um, and I like my logo. So yeah. Okay. Good, okay. Good. I, I mean, that is, that is one of the things that's important. Okay. Is that you love it. Okay. Because when you love it, it makes you do well. It makes you show up well. Right. Right. So that's one of the most important things. But I also think it always really depends on who your audience is too. And so that's going to depend on how you dress. Now, if you're just dealing one-on-one -on -one and you're in a tech field, right, Lori? Mm -hmm. Right. So like, yep. you know, people don't expect people in tech fields to show up in a business suit or anything. However, if you were going to be giving a presentation for a large corporate company, then I would probably change the way I dress oh, yeah. that day. When I meet in person, I usually dress up. I, I mean, this feels very casual to me and, okay. and that, you know, I'm in marketing as well as tech and, mm -hmm. you know, I've always dressed up for my jobs, but okay. when I'm doing client calls or networking calls, then this is okay. my typical attire. So why do you dress differently for the Zoom ones versus the in-person? 
is it different? I mean, is it, is it different? Are, do, are you, were you going about things differently in person versus zoom? I'm just asking you just to kind of, no, it's a really good, I mean, because I, I am, I, I often wonder if I'm underdressed and I would feel that I was underdressed going for a client meeting. Um, yeah. Like I very rarely wear shorts or denim, you know, unless it's someone that I've worked with for a while that I'm comfortable with and it's, you know, yeah. that kind of setting, but um, I don't know. That's a good, yeah. it depends on the meeting too. I don't know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and I think, you know, before we were dressing a certain way and we were like, because we were meeting with people and we wanted to present that positive front and I kind of questioned should we dress the same way when we're meeting for that, you know, that potential client or whatever, when it's just on zoom, because this is the way we're going to be doing business, unfortunately. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, like I, I will never get on zoom without my makeup and my hair done. And, you know, like that drives me nuts yeah. when it's like overly casual, but I just don't, I don't feel like I have to dress up for zoom, but no. Somebody yeah. made the comment, Lori, that they can't really see your logo. So if in, in a setting like this where you're a smaller box, we can't really tell that that's your logo. So if you had something behind you that had your logo or something where people could see, then you yeah. wouldn't really be just about your shirt. But now if you were one-on-one, -on -one, like when you and I are talking and we're side by side, I can see your logo just fine. But if you're in a group like this or in a big networking group, they may not be able to see that. I noticed your logo the very first time we met. Um, and again, I thought it was very professional and I could tell what you did based on your logo, but you, not everyone's going to be able to see that. And the only reason why I have a banner that stays behind me all the time is because A, people expect it. When I go into networking groups, if they've seen me before, they recognize me because of it, right? It leaves an impression. And then they always just know it's lead up for women you know, based on what's behind me. So sometimes having that image also in your background, some people do it by what they drive, right? If they wear, you know, certain, I know, I knew a lady, she owned a company called Black Dress Circle. She always showed up in a black dress. So well, yeah. Did, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was like her brand. So again, if your brand is to wear bright colors and pinks and stuff like that, um, if no one can see your logo, then just put it, have something behind you or something yeah, okay. that would represent your brand. I have thought about doing that, getting a, yeah. a logo. Okay. And I, my, oh. my t-shirts have it bigger, but then I feel like it's a t-shirt and it's not staring at your boobs. Cause yes. then it's right. Exactly. There. <laughs> well, you know, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> Are you single Lori? No, no, <laughs> no she's not. <laughs> I'm teasing you. But you know, another thing, Lori, that sometimes we forget that, you know what? When I get off this call, guess what? I can take off this jacket and I can be in my tank top. I can be comfy. Right. So, it's so cute. You know, that tank top's adorable. I know it is. It is adorable. <laughs> well, it's just a plain, simple tank top. But see, now I can't get back my jacket back on. <laughs> but here's the thing. It doesn't have to be anything real special that you just throw on when you're going to get on Zoom and then you get off Zoom. That's what I do. I This thing comes off. And I'm nice and comfy when I'm not interacting with people. So it doesn't, it, it, you don't have to do a lot to make yourself look presentable. So you can definitely do that. So anyone else have any comments for Lori about her polo shirt? Anyone feel anything? Mary? Yeah. Um, something that occurs to me because I come from like a video production background and mm -hmm. when we're on zoom, it's not just how we look it's how the whole picture looks. Mm -hmm. So be very aware if your background is a little messy or if your background is a lighter color than your face, you need to have enough light on your face. The other thing is that if you get your, in the frame, if your eyes are at two thirds up the screen, that looks professional. That just comes across as professional. If you're down here or up here, it's yeah. iffy. Um, so those kinds of things. And personally, I dress for networking because why should I meet someone for the first time and then look better the second time I meet them? I don't want to 
mess up the possibility of a second time because they've they've written me off as kind of sloppy or not worth the price. Yeah. Thanks, Mary. Anyone else have any questions or comments or want to have a discussion about something? Thank you, Tracy. You've been really helpful. Thank you. Appreciate it, Mary. Is Tracy, there a yeah. video that you wanted to show? Oh, go ahead, Donna. Well, I was just going to comment that I think a lot of this does have to do with the area that you're working in, the field that you're working in. And, you know, what I notice with Lori is uh, I'm drawn to her color with the pink, um, but then the pink brings me to her glasses, which brings me to her eyes. So I got a combination of I knew she was in a business that had a brand because I could tell that was a logo. When I went to speaker view, I could see the logo, but then I'm drawn to her eyes, which look warm and inviting. So, you know, I may not be like a lot of people because I do work in a field where people tend to be casual. And when I do coaching calls, if I came dressed the way that you're dressed today, Tracy, uh, some of my clients would feel uncomfortable that I was kind of dressed up and they weren't. So um, I may not be casual in shorts and, you know, a t-shirt, but I'm much more casual in that setting. Mm -hmm. And I have to admit, I hope no one cringes, but this is the truth. And I want to speak it in case it's anyone else's truth. I've written award-winning internationally published books in my jammies and had no problems with products. <laughs> yeah. So I just want to bring that other voice yeah. and I appreciate and respect your expertise. I look forward to what you might have to uh, tell me that I could do differently. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it's not always something that's going to impact people, but a lot of people it does. So I was shocked. I didn't think it would have ever impacted me short of during that time when COVID hit, I was shocked at how much it really made a difference. Once I started getting dressed again and started putting on my makeup and everything. I mean, like I was showing up without makeup on that was never me. And I was like, what in the heck am I doing? Like, this is like terrible. Like, I feel bad about my look. And it did nothing for my branding either, did it? So if I would show up that way and tell you I'm going to help you <laughs> look good, that was really counterproductive to my branding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have a video that you wanted to show, Tracy? You mentioned it earlier. Is it like- No, a I was going to send it to people that oh, wanted. Okay. Yeah. All right. Were you going to drop anything in the- I did. I just did. did. Okay. Yeah. I just, want to I just sure dropped it in the chat. So if anyone wants to click on any of those and go ahead and schedule time with me, or if you want to get that video, feel free to click on the links there. You should be able to get those. And uh, thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. It's great talking to you. And I, I can't wait to get to know a lot of you. So <laughs> one, of the, one of the main things I got from today um, from working with stylists in the past that you know, they get you kind of outside your comfort zone where we stay in what we would call our comfort zone of our clothes. Right. Yes. And I never realized how many grays or blacks or things like that, that I used to wear. And I don't know why I would wear those colors. I just was attracted. And it wasn't until someone showed me, Hey, you know, your closet's full of a really lot of dark colors. And that doesn't even the dark purples or dark blues don't show up on zoom, you know, and, and they really pushed me out of my comfort zone a to buy things I never would have bought before, like white pants or colored shirts. Um, and for, for you to think bigger for your brand, you know, I think our vision, we tend to maybe stay here within, you know, and if you're a yoga instructor, you're going to be wearing yoga attire, right? It's very like, like Donna said, it's, based on your industry, I, I would never, I told Melissa this, I would never want a doctor walking in and running shorts, you know, and a tank top being like, hey, let's check you out today. I'm like, aren't you like supposed to be dressed like a doctor? What's happening right now? But 
even though we say we don't judge a book by a cover and I'm all about non-judgment to other people, there's a first impression that happens when you meet someone always. And so how can you elevate that first impression for yourself and your brand? What small little tweaks can you make? Whether it just be knowing that if you had a boat top, you know, um, shirt or a three quarter sleeve or sleeveless, that that was better for your body shape. At least you would have some, you know, now to know what to start searching for. And I just rely on the experts like Tracy to share that information with me because that's not where my brain goes. My brain doesn't understand like, oh yeah, this is, I can tell you what feels most comfortable on me and, and I can look in the mirror to see what, what I like. But when it actually comes down to buying the right clothes, I needed someone that would grab stuff off the rack that I normally would never pick up for mm -hmm. me to try on, right? Um, just something different and new. And it just changes your whole outlook on the way you dress and your confidence and how you feel. And you have, you know, have all these choices and layering clothes that are already in your closet that you would never thought of layering different colors with. And you're like, wow, that looks great together. And I've never worn them together. And I've owned them for like five years. So again, there's just so much that it brings to our brand. And when you're consistent with your brand, you become memorable. That's part of becoming memorable to people is being consistent in your colors and in your brand. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Colleen. That's, yeah. Those are the things that I talk to people about all the time. So yeah. <laughs> that's great that you mentioned all of that. So, cause yeah. that, that is really what it is. And it's, it is thinking outside the box because we yeah. get stuck in a pattern and we yeah. don't think about it. And then you realize like um, Mary that I was talking about with, it was the type of fabric. And, and she told me, I don't wear that fabric. And I said, put it on. And so she put it on and she goes, oh, I don't see my belly. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and so I said, put back what she would typically would wear. And I'm like, try that on. And then she looked at herself in the mirror and she said, no, this looks awful on me. I'm like, I just want to make sure that you look the best. So yeah. it's amazing what just uh, the type of fabric can do for you even. Yeah. I remember the first time someone gave me a silk shirt and I was like, what is this material? It's like butter. And they're like, this is called silk. The mm. stuff that you have in your closet is called polyester. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I think I love silk. I, I really love this type of fabric. So again, just being introduced to some fun things that make you feel good, but also are really comfortable on. And, you know, I've seen different photos of women presenting on stage and they'll show them in one outfit, then they show them in the next outfit. And it's like night and day, just the authority that they command, the attention they command, how I like notice them based on what they were wearing before uh, versus what they were wearing. So colors speak, colors help you with sales, colors speak to other people. Uh, a lot of those topics are, you know, if you want to make it easier for you to be able to sell, cert wear certain colors because they speak to another person. Yeah, and, colors have a lot of power in yeah. what it's communicating. Yeah, just yeah. like you said that. Like, it's amazing when you're looking at different colors. And yeah. um, one lady had, we had talked about that she needed to wear yellow. with Maybe it's a yellow bracelet or whatever, because those were the qualities she was trying to elicit in her business mm -hmm. and in people's opinions about her. Mm -hmm. That's great. Did yeah. anyone have any questions before we wrapped up today? I want to make sure I give you the link for the next Teaching Tuesday that we have rolling out. Let me see if I can <clears throat> find it real quick here. See if anyone, if you have any questions or uh, want to uh, save the chat or have a conversation with someone else, go ahead and do that now. Our next Teaching Tuesday is going to be next Tuesday. Katrina Sawa is going to be teaching us on... Um, Catapult your business with your book, how to become a sought after leader, speaker, and entrepreneur by becoming an author with one or multiple books. And for those of you that don't know, we're actually in the middle of doing a compilation book right now with a bunch of ladies and lead up for women called Step Into the Spotlight. And we actually have a, um, we have a next Monday, we have a summit with has all of the speakers in the summit, I'm looking to see if I, by chance, had, 
I don't. I was looking to see if I had one of the links um, at my fingertips that I could grab for you guys so that you could sign up for that. It's going to be on Monday and Tuesday from 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time to 1 p.m. And I would love for you guys to register for free just to get to meet all these experts that I interviewed. They give so many practical tips and free advice and free downloads. It's awesome. There's no obligation for you guys to attend. Uh, here it is. I'm, I'm finding it right now. Let me just drop this affiliate link uh, in here for you guys to get registered for it. It's uh, like I said, July 12th and 13th. I just interviewed Danella this morning who was talking about maximizing your message from stage. So she gives tips on how to do that in all different ways that you don't even think about a stage. So she's pretty awesome with that. And Katrina is the publisher doing my book right now that we're doing for Step in the Spotlight that releases on August 11th. So excited about that. She is an amazing publisher. She has a marketing background. So her marketing background really helps you drive from your book people to your programs. And that's what it's about. So many people get into compilation books or write a book, and then they just sell the book. They do nothing else. It doesn't go anywhere. They don't market it. They're really not utilizing them having a book to their absolute advantage. And what she does is she takes her marketing experience and applies that to each author in the book and helps them drive everyone back to their websites, their programs. So again, uh, she takes it to a whole nother level. So we hope you guys will join us next week for that. I dropped the link in the chat so you guys can sign up for next week's Teaching Tuesday. Again, we'll remind you, Tracy, thank you so much for being with us today. And I know Tracy will reach out to each one of you um, that put your comments in there and wanted to know more about uh, being slimmer and about image. So yes. thank you so much, Tracy. Thanks, for Colleen. Appreciate it. And remember the challenge. Tomorrow you got to you got to do a symbol oh. and you got to post it. I'm going to put a little posting in there. So make sure that you comment. I want to know, did it help you with your productivity and how did it make you feel? So you said the link isn't going through to, let me see real quick. What'd they say? Oh no, it's not going through. I heard exactly what she's yeah. saying. I will get you guys the link for that. So sorry about that this morning, Donna. Maybe I'll could they check the Facebook group? Could you give it to them in the Facebook group too? Yeah. I can email it to you guys and I'll give it to you. Um, I'll make comments on here and give it to you in the Facebook group so you guys can get signed up for that. Sorry about that, Donna. All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of your week. And again, happy 4th of July. It's a short week. Yay. All right, you guys. Thank we'll you. See you next week. Take care. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you.